Welcome back to V8 Creative. I'm Nigel, here's Rufus, and today in part nine of the Ultima RS build, we're focusing on cooling. again in the Dean Den and this week we are focusing on the cooling components for that huge V8 that's going to be nestling behind my head in that engine bay. Now if any of you out there have built a component car or tuned a standard car or done an engine transplant you understand how important cooling is because there's nothing more stressful being trapped in traffic on a hot sunny day and you can see that temperature gauge nudging up and you just know if you don't start moving soon, that beautiful lump behind you is just gonna cook itself. But there's no fear with the Ultima RS. This car has been designed, the cooling system, to cool 1,200 horsepower in some of the hottest markets in the world. So here in good old Blighty, when I'm gonna be putting in a more modest engine, yep, I can't afford 1200 horsepower, this thing is gonna just, just cool itself. And how's it doing that? Well, it's doing that by the design of the radiator, by the cooling fans, by how the coolant is pumped from the front to the rear of the car and the rear to the front of the car, the components chosen, the duct, you get the idea. So what this video is going to do is show you the components show you some of the installation, but I must make another confession now. I've run out of time. I'm not only late, but I've run out of time to do the full install. So some of this installation is gonna be pushed forward to next week, but I made the decision and thought, yep, you need some footage before there is a fortnight of silence. So all there's left to say is hold tight and let's get spannering. It's unwrapping time again, and I need to introduce you to Pete the Penknife. Now, it was actually given to me by Pete, so thank you very much, one of the YouTube viewers. So, what we're focusing on today is the installation of the radiator and also the pipes that run down the side of the car. Because clearly, engines at the back, rads at the front. So, let's crack open this radiator, which I must say, Oh, Pete the pen knife is very good. Wow, look at that. Now immediately looking at this radiator, I can see it's a serious bit of kit. Firstly, aluminium, light, and also very good for conducting heat. Secondly, I can see the welding on it is beautiful. And what I really, really like are these laser cut plates that are integral to the radiator that actually provide the mounting points for the huge fans that I'll show you in a minute that bolt onto the rear of this radiator. Now, What a beautiful bit of kit. Okay, let me put that to one side. Over there, just out of shot. What have we got next? Well, next we have, what's this? A swirl pot. Now, I'm not going to be installing this today because this goes in the back of the car, but I'll just open it up while we are unwrapping all the goodies. So you can see, how beautifully machined these items are. Mounting plates to go on to the rear bulkhead and a lovely machined aluminium lid for the swirl pot. Nice bit of kit, that. And then what's this? This is the expansion tank. Now the capacity of all these have been designed for the engine I've chosen, which I still haven't shared with you. I do appreciate that. But 
What I like about this is I just know that this is going to do what it basically says on the tin. So there we go. We got our swirl pot and I'll explain to you when I install these exactly the difference between a swirl pot and an expansion tank. So there we go. Matching alloy racing fabrications. Nice bit of kit. We put these over here. Now, as I said earlier, the water, the coolant needs to be fed from the front of the car to the rear of the car and the rear of the car to the front of the car. And this is done by these two. Ah, oh, Pete the pen knife is doing it. And there we go. And what I particularly like is if you see here, the ends have been flanged. Now that's superb because when you put a silicon hose over this and you have your Jubilee clip on top, if you don't have a flange, there is a risk under extremely high pressure, the hose can blow off. Yeah, okay, I've taken a peek in here already. There's so much in this box I needed to. Let's open this up. Now this is cooling components. So let's put that over here, making sure we've got enough room. These are the monster P-clips to hold the two long tubes down the side of the car. You thought you had enough P-clips in the last two episodes, but there's more here. Wow, that's a pretty comprehensive kit, I must say. And then we have two of these Revotech fans. Now Revotech is a seriously good brand. I've used their products before and they are 11 inch, which is big. Let's have a look. So there's two of these and they mount onto the radiator and of course the termination goes straight into the loom on the RS. Anyway, I think that's it. Let's get spannering.
Now what I'm doing is I'm training my creative director to get spanners for me. So Rufus, can you get me the 13 mil spanner, please? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, good boy. You get it. You get it. That's it. You get the spanner. Good boy. Good boy. That's it. Wow. He's a genius. The next stage is to mount the radiator permanently in the mouth of the car. And to do this, what we need to do is seal the gaps between the radiator and these three alloy panels. And to do that, we use this expanding foam. So this is a time critical operation I'm going to do now. So what I need to do is lay a piece of this foam across this line here, up here, and up here, and then before it expands too much, get the radiator in place. So wish me luck. <laughs> this should go okay. If it doesn't, you're actually gonna see me getting very stressed because I've got one shot at this. Anyway, fingers crossed. Perfect. And now what we're going to do is just put in the nuts and bolts under and then the radiator is permanently fixed. Now we have the radiator permanently mounted, the next thing to do is mount the electric fans. Now I've got them down here and the feeds for the electric fans, this is the left hand and this is the right hand are in the center of the chassis. So what I'm going to do is position these fans, as you can see here, with the wire coming out this side, and the other fan with the wire coming out this side. So they both come out of the middle of the radiator. Now the connections on the fans, we just have a red and a black, pretty obvious what that is, the feed and the earth. And on these two supplies, we have black, which is the earth, and the feed for the left fan, which is yellow, and the black earth on the right fan, and the feed for the right fan, which is the orange. There's probably a note here, you probably realize when you're looking at these videos, I use these little, business card holders to hold the nuts and screws for each stage of the build. And what's nice about this is you know, if you've got any left in there, they're either a spare or you've forgotten something. But perfect count again, Ultima, thank you. So there we go, they're fitted down Tightly. Now what we'll do is I will just temporarily connect these connections and then I will tidy them up a little bit later. Okay, so that's the rad finish. Now the next job is putting on the side feeds from the front to the rear of the car. Right, we have some exciting news, Rufy. Guess what? Ultima sent me a box, and inside that box was something for you. Should we see what it is? I think they're trying to bribe you. Right, let's have a look. What's this? Look, Ultima tape and oh, yummy yum. Right, I think we need Pete the pen knife. There we go. Oh, don't you don't you, don't get your nose near this. Don't get your nose near this. Oh, oh, you can smell it, can't you? Get, look, look, out the way, out the way. Out the way. God. There you go. No, you don't want that. Right, let's let's open this up. What's in there? What is it? Oh, yes. Oh, look. Oh, should we open one up? God. They do these up well, don't they? 
Oh, sorry, you need to get the pen knife again. Well, thank you, Richard and Andy, at the factory. I think you've bribed my directive. Directive. I'll have to stop it there. So thank you again. All right. So thank you, Richard and Andy, and the crew at the Ultima factory. I think you've bribed my creative director. And on that note, poo, they stink. We'll see you later. Bye.